Problem 2-77, we're going to be going over part B. So over here we have 4 over 5 multiplied by 1. And we want to know if that equals 4 over 5. Let's write it down. 4 over 5, or 4 fifths, multiplied by 1. That equal 4 over 5. So you might remember, we might have to go back and check, but there's something called the identity property of multiplication. And what that is, is the number 1 right here. So anything you multiply by 1 is always going to stay the same. And that's what it kind of means by being the identity of multiplication. So over here we have 4 fifths. We're just multiplying it by 1, and we're ending up with just 4 fifths. And so that is true. So that one was pretty short, so let's go on to part C as well. So that's going to be 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 3. And you want to know if that equals 1. So you could do the uh, multiplying and work it out, but this is also, you can just use a rule to just kind of shortcut that and recognize that as. Um, either true or not. In this case, it's going to be using the inverse property of multiplication. So as a reminder of what the inverse is, it says that if you have some number, let's say x, and you multiply it by its inverse, which is going to be called 1 over x, you will just get 1, no matter what x is. And you, you might be wondering why there's a 1 on top, or you can kind of just think of x as x over 1. So you're kind of just flipping the x over 1 fraction to being 1 over x. So over here, we have 3 over 2. And the inverse of 3 over 2 is going to be 2 over 3. So you can kind of see you have 1 over the other. You inverse it, you now have the other over it. And the inverse property of multiplication says that when you multiply something by its inverse, you're just going to end up with 1. And so we know that 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 3 should equal 1.